Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will practice reading input from the keyboard in Java. So let's go to IntelliJ and get started. So as you know, in order to read input, we need a scanner object. So let's start by creating our scanner object. We will use the scanner class and then we will put the name of the object. Let's call it input for example. Now as you can see over here, this is colored red. So we need to import the scanner class. All you have to do is to put the cursor on the scanner and press Alt and Enter. And as you can see, we have import class over here. So click on that and as you can see, this import statement is written. So now Java knows that the scanner over here is actually the class that is inside java.util, all right? So now we can use this scanner class in order to create some objects. So let's continue. Over here, we are going to assign our input object to be equal to new scanner. And as a parameter, we will pass system.in, all right? So now this input object can be used to read data from the keyboard. So let's start by reading an integer. So first of all, we will type the name of the object and then we will use the dot operator. And as you can see, we have all these methods over here. So to read an integer, we will use the next int method. So as you can see, it takes no parameters and it returns an integer. And as you know, the value that is returned is the value that is entered by the user using the keyboard. So let's call the method and run the program. As you can see, this is blinking. So our program is paused. So what's happened exactly? When we are executing this statement, our program will wait for us in order to enter some data. And as you can see, we are reading an integer. So let's put an integer over here. For example, 20. As you can see, this is colored in green. And this is inside IntelliJ in order to indicate that this is input, all right? Now press enter, and as you can see, our program has finished. So what happened exactly, we entered the 20 and it was returned by this method. But we didn't do anything with the returned value. So for example, let's print it. I'm going to use the println method like this. And over here, let's print input.nextInt. So now the value that will be entered will be returned to the println method. And the println method will print it, all right? Run the program again. And now we have the same thing. We have to enter a value. So let's say 20, press enter. And now as you can see, 20 is printed. Now run the program again, and now let's try to enter a double. So let's say 2.5. Press enter, and as you can see, we have an error. And if you look over here, we have input mismatch exception. So first of all, this is an exception, and we will talk about exceptions later. But what's important is that this is an input mismatch exception. So the type of the input over here didn't match the method. We are reading an integer, not a double, right? So this is why we got an error. So let's use the next double method in order to read a double. So next double. Now run the program, and now our program is waiting for us to enter a double. So let's say 2.5, press enter, and as you can see, we have 2.5. Let's read a float. So next, float. Run the program, enter a number, let's say 1.5, and as you can see, we have 1.5 over here. But this is actually a float, it's not a double. So let me prove this to you. What I'm going to do is to remove this statement, and let's create a float variable. So float f, and this variable will be equal to input.next float, right? So as you can see, we don't have an error. So the type on the right side of the assignment operator is the same as the type on the left side. So this method returns a float, right? Let's try to use the next double and now have a look, we have an error. This error says required float and we found a double. So this is because this method returns a double and we are trying to store it inside a float, all right? So let's use the next float method like this. And now for example, let's print F. So run the program. And now let's enter a value, let's say 10.5. And as you can see, we have 10.5, all right? Similarly, if you have an integer over here, we'll get an error. So this error says the required is an integer and you found a float. So to read an integer, we will use the next int method, as you already know. And after that, we are printing this integer. Now let's print it, for example, plus 10. Run the program. And for example, let's say 20. Press enter. And as you can see, we have 30. So 20 plus 10 is equal to 30, all right? Now let me remove this statement and over here, I'm going to read a boolean. So input dot next boolean, right? Run the program and over here we can enter true or false. So let's say false and as you can see false is printed. Run the program again, let's say true, press enter and we have true. Now let's run the program again and for example, try to put a number. Press enter and you have an error because we are reading a boolean. Run the program again. Try to put a string, press enter, and also we have an error, all right? And this is also because we are reading a boolean over here. Now finally, let's read a string. So let's say we want to use the next method, and this returns a string, all right? 
So run the program and over here let's enter an string, press enter and here is our string printed. Run the program again and now let's enter a string of multiple words like this, press enter and as you can see only the first word is read. So as we said in order to read a string with spaces we will use the next line method as you can see. So run the program and now enter the string that you want even with spaces, press enter and as you can see this is our string printed. And of course we can store the red value inside a variable. So this is it, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.